The right time to begin a spiritual path is right now. Right now. A better time is yesterday, but unfortunately we can't do that. An even better time would have been last year, but since we can't do that either, the very, the very best time that we actually still have any control over is right now. Right now. There is absolutely nothing in our lives that cannot or should not coexist with our spiritual path. There is nothing in our life that you could legitimately say, I need to do this first, and then I'm going to be spiritual. Unless, unless what you wanted to do first was just live a completely mindless, you know, hedonistic life, and you said, wait, let me just, you know, eat as much as I can eat, drink as much as I can drink, have sex with as many people as I can, absolutely just be as reckless and mindless as I possibly can be. That wouldn't go so well with spirituality. It would be, it would be very difficult to simultaneously continue to live that life as you embarked on a spiritual path. So if you were attached to that life for any, any reason, you would have to put off your spiritual practice. Because the minute that you started really meditating, that you started introspecting, that you started connecting spiritually, you can't, you can't keep living on the surface. But assuming that that's not your goal, assuming that your goal is not how, how superficial of a life can I possibly live, the time for spirituality is right now. Everything else is what we do. Spirituality is who you are. And so it would be like saying, what would be the right time to be a man? I'd say, well, I, mean, I am a man. I mean, I have a job, I have family, I have this. But, but you're a man doing those things. There's no, there's no contraindications between that. There's no contradictions between that. The man is who you are, also on a very superficial level. Spirituality is much deeper, but at least, at least on a certain level, it's who you are. And as that man, you're going into your job. As that man, you're going into a marriage. As that man, you're having a family. As that man, you're having friends. Well, in the same way, on an even deeper level, as a spiritual person, or on an even deeper level, as spirit, as consciousness, you are in a body that is currently in the form of a young man who has a job. You are spirit, you are consciousness in the body of a young man who has a wife and kids. There's no contradictions there. In fact, you're going to be much better as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a man, by identifying most deeply as the fact that you're consciousness and spirit. Because that then dictates how you, how you do it all. Simply having a job is not you know, such a, a great accomplishment. I mean, it's good, congratulations. You, know, you get up every day and put food on the table, that's wonderful. But my point is there's, there's billions of people around the world who have jobs. There's billions of people in the world who have marriages and children and families. We all have families. What makes you unique, what makes you something other than just everything else that's going on, is connecting to spirit, connecting to consciousness. 
that's what makes you not just the actor merged with the mask who thinks you are a man, who thinks you are your job or that you are your relationships. Connected to spirit will help you as you move through, as you do all of this, know how to do it. And then the, the side beautiful bonus and benefit is you'll pass it on to your children. You'll pass it on to those who are with you. And you'll actually, you'll actually be a part of bringing about a change in the world because what we need are more and more people connected to spirituality. If everybody waits until they're, you know, old and retired and they've done everything, and okay, well, so I've done it all, now I guess I'll be spiritual. You know, I mean, good for them. At least they've got, you know, they've, they've figured it out still at some point before the deathbed. But wouldn't it be so much nicer to have that all along? You know, it's like my favorite uh, psychology experiment that I always talk about of the students who were given this task of watching the basketball game. And the, the experiment was the researchers took all of these subjects and they said, okay, your job is you're going to watch this six-minute basketball game. And there's a red team and a white team. And you're going to count their baskets, how many baskets each team made. End of the six-minute game, they were each given a questionnaire. How many baskets did the red team make? They all answered correctly. How many baskets did the white team make? They all answered correctly. Third question, which was really the part of the, the point of the experiment. Third question said, did you notice anything else? And more than 50% of them said no. And now it turns out that halfway through this basketball game, into the center of the court, an enormous gorilla, I mean a person dressed as an enormous gorilla, came onto the middle of the basketball court and started dancing, occupying the full camera frame that was videoing the basketball game. For 30 seconds, this gorilla danced. And more than half the students missed it. Now, you could say they weren't paying attention. But clearly they were paying attention because they all counted the number of baskets properly. They hadn't blinked, they hadn't sneezed, they hadn't looked away, they hadn't had a nap because otherwise they would have miscounted baskets. They got all the baskets, missed the gorilla. And the reason they missed it was, and this was what the study was looking at, it wasn't what they to were told to look for. They had been given very clear instructions. This is a basketball game. Count the baskets. And they did it. And nobody said to them, by the way, make sure you don't miss the gorilla. If they had also been given that as a, as a task, nobody would have missed it. They would have all been waiting, gorilla, 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 when's it going to come? Even if they had simply been told, and by the way, there is something else. By the way, this isn't what it's about. Can't tell you what it's about, but just keep your eyes open. If they even had been given that much, they would have seen it. And I share this so frequently and particularly right now because this is what happens with life. We're told, okay, here's your job. Your job is get a good education, have a job, Get married, raise a family, make money, put your kids in good schools, you know, do these things, fulfill your responsibilities. But nobody ever says, and by the way, there's something else. And so a huge number of people never know there was something else. Maybe on their deathbed, maybe at the moment that death comes, there's a glimmer. I don't know. Some of them get it once they've done everything else. 
There are no more baskets to count. The game is over. I'm staring at a blank court. Okay, now maybe I can notice the gorilla. But to ask this early in the game, by the way, is there something else I should be looking for? That's really special. And that's, that's ultimately what the point is. So this is, this is why the right moment is now. Keep your eyes open. Unlike the gorilla, it's not a one-time thing for 30 seconds and then it goes away. It's there in every moment. And opportunities are there in every moment to connect with that. So you don't want to miss the point.